definitions. You ask me how, I don't know. But that's what they're tell telling us. And it's naive on the part of the Europeans, the French in particular, sending a warship to prevent smuggling of arms. As if arms were coming through the sea. As if the Israeli Navy was not uh, monitoring and controlling the seashores of Gaza. You heard the many stories about uh, Gazan's fishermen attacked by Israeli boats. Even fishermen are not allowed the free movement in the waters of Gaza. And now they think that Hamas is probably somehow going to bring in the weapons uh, via the sea. Now there is a, a new plan. Uh, the Egyptians, the Americans and the Israelis want to control the, to control the borders between uh, Israel and Egypt. And I assure you it will not work. It will not work. Because if you squeeze a community like Gaza has been squeezed, if you humiliate them like the Gazans have been humiliated, if you deny them access to the outside world like the people of Gaza have been denied, these people are capable of miracles. And they talk about miracles as how they foiled the Israeli uh, plan. Now what happened on the ground throughout this? What happened on the ground is that there was very little fighting on the ground. And whenever there was fighting on the ground, the Israelis were sustaining losses. Much of the destruction of Gaza happened from the air, happened from the sea, and happened from a distance. The Israeli army is not capable of fighting a real war. The Israelis never fought a real war. 1948 was not a war. 1967 was not a war. Probably the only semi-war was 1973. And Sadat turned it into a defeat for his people. But this was a real war. And the Palestinian people managed to defeat the Israelis. Now, a new war will begin, or has begun actually, a new war has begun. A war of different nature and of much bigger dimensions. A war in which Hamas is being blackmailed. Blackmailed on two issues. First, the reconstruction of Gaza. Everybody is saying, oh we are sorry that so much destruction has happened in the conflict between Hamas and Israel. As if it was a, an equal dual conflict. Nobody talks, unfortunately, they don't have the courage, they don't have the decency to say, in the war Israel waged on Gaza. And I want to remind you here that Hamas was willing to renew the truce that existed for, less than, for about six months, less than six months, about five months or so. But it wanted the siege to be lifted. The Israelis refused, the Egyptians refused, the so-called international community refused. The decision was taken, not only by Hamas, but all the other Palestinian factions within Gaza. Public opinion was also in favor of this, that if the siege was not lifted, then this, uh, this was a war anyway. Because you, you had to have the siege uh, lifted. The Israelis did not want to renew the truce. The Israelis waged the war. And I need to remind you of another fact. Hamas did not violate the truce not a single time. Not a single time. And I challenge any Israeli to tell us when Hamas violated the truce. It was on the 4th or the 5th of November that the truce came to an end because Israel decided to have an incursion into Gaza killing several members of Hamas allegedly because Israel suspected they were digging a tunnel. Now the war that we are talking about here today is about first forcing Hamas to accept the conditions for reconstruction. What are the conditions? <coughs> the money has to go to the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah, which is a bankrupt, corrupt, uh, traitor uh, authority. Cannot be, cannot be trusted about anything. So as for them to be able to come through the back door into Gaza. And I assure you that this will never happen. And as uh, the leaders of Hamas in Gaza say, 
those who have not been able to come back on top of an Israeli tank will not be allowed to come inside a sack of flour. They will not, they will not be allowed to come back. And now uh, Mahmoud Abbas and his team are exposed for all to see. Nobody now is reluctant to say these are traitors, these are sellouts, and congratulations to Israel for having uh, to be uh, to, to having succeeded in destroying uh, Fatah and in destroying the PLO. But the PLO gone, Fatah gone, Hamas is here, and Hamas is today the legitimate leader of the Palestinian people. And the Pal and the supporters of Palestine around the world need to be the first to recognize this reality. Hamas is not what uh, people thought at one time simply a religious a group that wants to establish a religious uh, sort of uh, political system. Hamas should be perceived as simply a national liberation movement. That's what Hamas is. If Hamas, for any reason, tomorrow changes its mind, like Fatah did, or, it's the, or the leadership of Fatah did, our support will continue for the cause. It's not a support for a group. It's not a support for a person. It's a support for the principle. The principle that the Palestinians deserve to be given their freedom and deserve to be served justice. Now, the second thing that uh, the world community and Israel uh, is trying to blackmail uh, Hamas and the people of Gaza is the siege. And the siege has succeeded because of Egypt. If Egypt did not want the siege to succeed, Egypt could have done it. Because the Rafah crossing is an Egyptian-Palestinian crossing. And when Israel withdrew unilaterally from Gaza, Israel ceased to have direct control over uh, that crossing. It was Mohammed Dahlan and the Egyptians who concluded a deal in November 2005 with the Israelis, giving the Israelis access through cameras and through uh, indirect monitoring uh, tools and means to the uh, crossing to control what comes in and to control what comes out. And until today, and you heard the scandalous statement by Mubarak when he said, when well, Israel is an occupying power and an occupying power has every right to check what comes in and what comes out, as if occupation is legitimate. Legitimizing occupation. And Gaza was not occupied by the Israelis when he said that. Gaza was under siege, but not occupied. There's a difference between being occupied and being under siege. I regret to say that the Egyptian regime, as it exists today, is a more is, is uh, has more shows more animosity to the Palestinians than many Israelis and many Americans. Why? There are a number of reasons for this. The first uh, reason is that uh, the Egyptian regime has a problem with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And they consider Hamas to be the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. And they don't want to see the Muslim Brotherhood uh, achieving any success anywhere. A success by Hamas in Gaza or anywhere else might boost the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And everybody knows if free and fair elections were allowed to take place in Cairo, the Muslim Brotherhood will win all the seats. Or most of the seats. And it'd be a bit modest. Most of the seats they would win. Just like Hamas did uh, in Gaza. Because the Egyptian people are sick and tired of this corrupt tyrant. But corrupt tyrants are favored by the leading democracies of the world by the American administration, by the European democratic administration, and by administrations, and by the Israelis, who claim to be the only democracy in the Middle East, and actually the only truly democratic, democratically elected group in the Middle East today is Hamas. So lifting the siege and reconstructing Gaza are going to be the two main issues for the war to come. Now, let me conclude by saying something about what is expected of us and what should we be doing. On the second day of the ceasefire, 
you know, Israel first announced the ceasefire, then the following day Hamas and the other factions uh, reciprocated.